Have you decided it's time to add a canine to your family dynamics, but you're unsure on what breed to get? Well, in today's video, we're going to compare the differences between the Chow Chow and the Malinois. Welcome back to the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. So let's dive in and start with the histories of both of these canines. Firstly, let's look into the history of the regal looking chow chow. Chow chows are actually one of the oldest dog breeds and this has been proven through genetic testing. Their ancestors originated from northern China and Mongolia. The earliest documentation of chow chows appear on pieces of pottery and in paintings. Chow chows have been extremely popular with Chinese emperors and it's even said that one emperor had over 2,500 chow chows that he kept as his hunting dogs. Chow chows have had many uses over the years, including guarding properties and herding and guarding livestock. Unfortunately, they were also used for their fur to trim coats. And it's also rumoured that chow chows get their name from the Chinese slang word chow, which means edible. Chow chows were considered a delicacy to eat in China. The UK Kennel Club first recognised chow chows in 1894 and the American Kennel Club recognised them in 1903. The Belgian Malinois, as the name suggests, originated in Belgium. They're one of four varieties of Belgian sheepdog that were developed in the late 19th century. The modern day Malinois can be traced back to this time and more specifically to a breeding pair owned by a Belgian shepherd named Adrian Janssens. In 1885 he purchased a rough haired fawn dog called Voss that he used to herd flock but also bred with a short haired brown brindle dog named Lys. After this initial meeting, Voss was bred with his daughters to further establish the line of grey rough-haired and short-haired Malinois and fawn rough-haired and short-haired Malinois. Today, Voss and Lisa are recognised as the ancestors of all modern Belgian shepherd dogs as well as the Bouvier and the Dutch Shepherd. Breeders decided to give each variety of Belgian Shepherd their own names. A breeder named Louis Hugi Barrett had done a lot to popularise the fawn short-haired Malinois in the city of Malane. The Malinois name was adopted from this city to refer to the fawn short-haired Belgian Shepherd. Hugi Barrett recognised that there was a lack of sheep in Belgium towards the end of the 1800s and turned to showcasing the Malinois' intelligence, obedience and loyalty. Because of this, they were used in the early 20th century as guard dogs and draft dogs and they were also the first breed to be used by the Belgian police. During the First World War, they had many roles in the military including messenger dogs, Red Cross dogs, ambulance cart dogs and even light machine gun cart dogs. After the First World War, many American servicemen bought back Malinois and other Belgian Shepherd dogs. The first Belgian Shepherd Club of America was formed in 1924 and they were officially recognised by the American Kennel Club shortly after. The Chow Chow is famous for their teddy bear like appearance. This medium sized breed stands up to a height of 20 inches or 50 centimetres at the withers and can weigh up to 80 pounds or 36 kilograms. Females will grow to a similar height but typically weigh a little less. As well as their big fluffy coat, the Chow Chow's other defining feature is their tongue. They are only one of a few dog breeds to have a bluish black tongue. This unique tongue sits inside a small yet broad skull. One interesting fact about their skull is that it's home to a set of 44 teeth. This is noteworthy as most dogs only have 42. They have small triangular ears that sit erect on their heads and they should look strong and muscular and have strong legs. As well as being likened to a teddy bear, they've also been described as lion-like in their appearance. This is due to their large amount of hair around their Next, that resembles the mane of a lion. Their coat can come in a variety of different colours including red, black, cream, shaded red, blue, white and fawn. Chow Chows have a dense double coat that needs to be brushed at least three times a week to keep it clean and tangle free. The Belgian Malinois is a medium sized Belgian Shepherd that is often confused with the German Shepherd. They're a short haired fawn coloured dog with a black mask. Males will grow to a height of 26 inches or 66 centimetres at the withers and weigh up to 75 pounds or 34 kilograms. Females are a little bit smaller with a maximum height of 24 inches or 61 centimetres and weighing up to 60 pounds or 27 kilograms. Their coat short and straight and their fur is particularly short around the head, ears and lower legs. They do have slightly long hair around the neck forming a collar but not so long that it stands out. They're a double coated breed that generally sheds twice a year. They'll need brushing at least twice a week to keep their coat healthy and to encourage new growth. 
The chow chow has been described as being feline in nature, as they often prefer to do what suits them. They're not really too fussed about pleasing their owners and can be quite selfish. This breed is very intelligent, but they're difficult to train. A positive approach is required when training, with consistency and plenty of treats, rewards and praise. They are, however, known as a relatively clean breed and are quick to learn toilet training. Their intelligent nature needs to be tested and they need to be kept mentally stimulated. A bored chow chow can become quite destructive and this can show itself in behaviours like barking, chewing and digging. You can keep them mentally stimulated with a range of dog toys like Kong, snuffle mats, and puzzle toys and this should prevent the negative behaviour. They are a moderately active breed and prefer to have a medium sized walk around 30 minutes each day but they'll join you on longer walks or hikes if desired. The Malinois is an intelligent and active breed that truly thrives in many tasks. They have a great deal of stamina and enjoy working which makes them a great breed for police work, search and rescue and performance events like agility. They are also a sensitive breed and don't respond well to harsher training methods. Due to this combination of high energy and sensitivity, they are not recommended for first time owners and instead for those experienced with dog training. They love everyone to be included in all family activities, so they're not suited to a home where the family's out every day at school or at work. There are quick learners and eager to please. As we've already touched upon, they thrive at dog sports, but they also love to play. They've been described as having a high play drive, as almost anything you ask them to do is like play to them. You should address this desire to play through exercise, as they're very high energy breed. You should try to aim for at least 90 minutes of exercise each day, which is best split into three 30 minute sessions. It's not just physical exercise they need, but also mental stimulation, so try and incorporate this as part of a variety of different games and exercises like runs, walks, hikes, fetch, games of hide and seek, puzzle games and snuffle mats. Without mental and physical exercise, Malinois can become destructive and show behaviours like barking, digging, anxious pacing, going to the toilet in the house and general destructive behaviour. So be sure you can dedicate plenty of time to exercise when choosing a Malinois because a tired dog is a happy dog. Chow Chows have a high prey drive as they were originally bred as hunting dogs. So if they're not properly socialised with small animals or cats, they can become aggressive. This isn't to say, however, that if you socialise your dog thoroughly enough from puppyhood, they couldn't live alongside other animals. If you choose to have your Chow Chow with other animals, never leave them alone together to prevent any accidents from happening. Chow Chows are a very protective breed that attach themselves to their families and will defend them when they feel the need to. They're best suited to families with older children as they are large dogs that could accidentally knock over small children by accident. If you do have small children, it's advised you don't leave them together without supervision. As we've said, they can be aggressive dogs if not socialised from a young age to different dogs, people, situations, sights and sounds. Chow Chows are also not the best with other dogs if not properly socialised. They can become aggressive when approached by any dogs that have, they have not met before. They can also have issues with dogs the same sex as them. While socialised, Malinois can make good family companions. They're great with children, especially if they've been raised around them. It's important to remember that they have a strong herd in heritage. This can sometimes lead to them nipping at children's feet and heels during playtime. An adult Malinois who's not familiar with children would be better suited to a home with older children who are mature enough to know how to properly interact with dogs. This is worth thinking about if you're adopting or rescuing an older dog. You should also teach your children how to approach and touch your Malinois and supervise any interactions between them to prevent bad behaviour from either side. Malinois can become aggressive towards other dogs and cats unless they've been raised alongside them. If you want them to get along well with other dogs and animals, it's important to start socialisation early, ensure you use positive reinforcement and reward appropriate behaviour. The breed does have a naturally high prey drive and natural hunting instincts which can make them challenging with other smaller domestic pets. This isn't to be said that they can't get along well with them if they are well socialised and been raised alongside them, however they should never be left unsupervised as accidents can happen. Both the Chow Chow and the Malinois are beautiful canines. Of two, the Malinois is more playful so will be better suited to the family with children. It's important to remember that both of these breeds can be hard work, they're both sensitive and the Chow Chow can be stubborn so they're not always recommended for first time owners. If you feel like you can meet the needs of either of these beautiful yet challenging breeds, you'll find them to be a perfect loving canine companion. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comments section below. And don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated Chow Chow videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Chow Chow Show.